back and today it's time for the, I believe, I'm gonna say this lightly, the final book in the Three Musketeers series. Not the final Dumas book that I'm ever gonna read, but the final in the Three Musketeers series. And that is The Man in the Iron Mask. Take a look, this is what he looks like. Honestly, I love this cover. According to the back, the general overall plot of this book is that Queen Anne, when she had her son, apparently had twins. And it's a secret that like not many people know about. The people who do know like were killed. It's a secret that she had twins. And they took one of them and hid them away. Someone else raised him and eventually they put him in the Bastille, the prison, and told the public, oh look, I have one son here. He's the heir to the throne, he is your king. And obviously no questions asked. Somehow, I don't know yet, somehow Aramis found out that this man in the Bastille is also the queen's son and he believes he is the rightful heir to the throne. So the whole plot of this book is removing the current king and putting in this king who is an identical twin and just replacing them because that is the God-given right. You know, he is the rightful king. That's what Aramis believed. I don't know what else is gonna happen. So one thing I will say is that this book jumps right into the deep end, okay? The 20 years after, had to set the scene a little bit. It took a couple pages to really get into it because it had to describe the state of France 20 years later from the first book. So it had to introduce all these new people and it had to set the scene of what France was looking at the time. This book doesn't do that. This book just jumps right in to Aramis entering the Bastille and being like, I think you're the king to this prisoner. So it definitely jumps right into the plot and it's a lot more interesting right off the bat compared to 20 years after. And when I say these, this king, these kings are teenagers. They're like 18, 20, they're young. One question I have is how much time has passed from the second book, 20 years after, to this book. I, there might be a date. I could go back and look at the dates that we're starting off and then figure it out. But when I read dates, I kind of just run over them with my eyes because I don't care. <laughs> but I am curious to see how much in the future this one is from the last one. And D'Artagnan in 20 years after got a promotion. So he's now the captain of the Musketeers as opposed to just a lieutenant. So I, I imagine Aram is trying to dethrone the king, the current king that is sitting on the throne. I imagine D'Artagnan is gonna have some sort of issue with that. And I imagine that's where this is going. But that's all I know right now. I think it is gonna be a much quicker, faster paced read than 20 years after, because like I said, it dove right into this pretty intense plot and it's under 500 pages. That's all I really have for right now. That's all I know. I have, I started it yesterday, so I'm 100 pages in and that's all I got for now. I'm in the kitchen because I have some baking I need to do today. So I'm gonna do that. Um, but thank you for coming back for the third installment of this Dumas reading challenge, <laughs> this Dumas reading experience that I'm going through right now. Dumas is a really good writer and I'm really happy that I'm taking the time to read through his repertoire. And one thing that I'm discovering and learning more about as I read these books is about Dumas himself because each book has like an introduction in the beginning, somebody talking about Dumas and his life. And he had an interesting life and he wasn't even originally a novelist. So he got famous and started his career by being a playwright. He wrote many successful plays in his time before he even wrote The Three Musketeers or any other of his novels. But he does have a lot more books than the ones that I currently have. At this point, I have high hopes for this book, okay? Because the second one really did it for me. As per usual, that's it for now. I have to get more into this book, find out what's going on, and then I can obviously give a more thorough review on it. But thank you for coming back. If you haven't watched the other two videos where I talk about and review the first two books in this series, I suggest you do that. You'll know what's going on. We can talk about these characters and be on the same page. <laughs> I'll catch you later. Peace.
get into the update for this book. Let's have a, a nail polish intermission for no real reason other than I just love this nail polish and I wanted to swatch it and I just got it. So, <laughs> wow, look at it, it's so beautiful. Ooh, ah, but seriously. But seriously though, it's not even focusing. It's gorgeous, and that's only two of the possibilities. Anyway, The Man in the Iron Mask. It's been a while since I've started the book. It's been, I mean, definitely over a week, and it's been moving slowly for it only being like a 450-page book, and... I haven't had any motivation to come on here and talk about what is happening. It's basically what I said it was. Aramis thinks the secret king's twin brother is the rightful heir to the throne, so he makes this plot to kidnap the king and imprison him and just replace him with his brother, and he hopes no one will know. He also has brought Porthos into this, but Porthos did not know what they were doing. He did not know he was kidnapping the real king. And um, I have a lot of issues with it. <laughs> if I'm honest, it just doesn't really feel like Aramis. So he goes through with this plot, they kidnap the king, and Aramis thinks he can confide in this one person. He believes this person will be on his side. But immediately, the guy he tells is like, Are you kidding me? And so immediately, Aramis and Porthos have to flee. They're now rebels. They immediately go and apprehend this false king, the brother, and all heck breaks loose immediately. It doesn't feel like an Aramis move. And even if Aramis did do something like that, it doesn't feel like Aramis to do it so poorly and get caught. And that's not sitting right with me. And then on top of that, not only is he making this, this made this decision and it's backfiring horrendously, but he also dragged Porthos down with him and he wasn't, Porthos didn't even know. I've just reached the point where Aramis like comes clean and tells him what's going on. And Aramis is like, look bro, we're actually actually rebels. We are being hunted for our heads and uh, yeah, sorry. And it's just this is awful. Like it's like, Aramis, what the heck? Why did you do that? <laughs> Not only did you do this to yourself, but you did it to Porthos. And on top of that, D'Artagnan knows, and he's the captain of the musketeers, so he's trying to serve the king, but he's also trying to find like a loophole. That way he can serve the king and not get his friends killed. But even that doesn't work out. And I have a hundred pages left of this book, and it's not looking good for my friends here. And I'm upset about it, because it's a good story. Like if you take out these characters that I know and love, so much and just have any other characters there, it's cool. Dethroning the king to replace him with his secret twin brother, like that's cool. But you throw D'Artagnan and Aramis and Porthos in the middle of this and it looks like they're not gonna make it out alive of this one, it hurts, it hurts. And so that's partially why it's taking me so long to read it because I'm like, I don't wanna see the outcome. I, I like, I don't wanna see the outcome so much, I'm mentally, distancing myself from this book. I'm like, no, it's not even real. Dumas didn't write this. Like, this isn't, this isn't how they go out. This isn't how it happens. But I haven't finished it yet. No one's died. I, I don't want to spoil anything. The second book, I thought someone was going to die. And I just thought that because, I don't know, it's like story writing. It wouldn't be unusual for one of the characters to die. Um, but we, you know, got off clean in the last one. So now I'm like pretty certain someone's going to die but I don't know who, and I don't know how many, I don't know, I don't know. But I don't think the odds are good that we're gonna get out of this one with all of them alive. And it makes me very sad. That is where I'm at with the man in the iron mask. <laughs> It is what it is, right? I'm just having a hard time picking it up because I don't wanna read about one of my favorite characters dying. That's all I have for right now. It shouldn't be too much longer before I can give you the final update. It's not looking good right now. At least my nails are pretty. Anyway, hopefully next time I see you, I won't be crying. <laughs> No. I finally finished it.
And I, I don't have much to say, but, but honestly. I don't have much to say, except like I'm glad it's over. And that makes it sound like it's an, a bad book, and it's not a bad book. I'm just upset at how it had to end. And when you think about it, it makes sense. We follow these guys throughout their whole lives, and people age, right? So things change, and it's not bad. I'm just glad I no longer have to read this book. That's really all I have. I think I'm gonna take a break from Dumas for a little bit. I still have two other Dumas books to read and I'm still planning on reading those. And so I'm gonna read those eventually and they will be part of this whole thing that I'm doing. But I'm gonna take a break from Dumas for a little bit and read something else that I'm not super emotionally invested in. And something quick and not be emotionally damaged by. That's it. That's it for this one. I have nothing else to say. Stay tuned for more content. Goodbye.